here in the hole for Tony Schumacher as he warms up ready to go up against Dale Worsham in the final. As NHRA celebrates its 60th anniversary, this was the way it was. John Asher's famous photograph of Roger Coburn and James Warren in their garage. What a change it is today as we take a look at John Force's shop in Nitro City, Indiana. With a Napa track fact, here's John Medlin with some of the work they do in these ultra-modern facilities on cylinder heads. Here we are at the cylinder head production portion of Don Schumacher Racing. And what we start with on our cylinder head production is a solid block of aluminum. It's a billet piece that weighs about 100 pounds. And we start through a various uh, stage of operations. It's about seven operations before it gets here to our five axis operation. Each step of the way, a little bit more of the cylinder head material is being removed and a little more detail added until we get enough material away and the shape of the head is good enough that it can get to this five axis portion that does our finished porting and finished combustion chamber work. In the past, all this has been done by hand. And in years past, there used to be a catastrophic thing if you had to change cylinder heads or you had to change blocks between rounds. But with the advent of the computer and the CNC machine, each cylinder head that's produced on these machines are exactly the same in every single dimension. So you can change cylinder heads like you're changing rear tires, and it really has no effect in the performance of the car. As this process continues on, we start with that solid 100-pound block of material. We end up with the cylinder head here in its finished condition, which weighs about 36 pounds. It takes us a little over 20 hours worth of machining time to produce one cylinder head, but us crew chiefs can ruin it in four seconds. <laughs> hey, Al, well, I'll tell you what, we could ruin a lot of parts back in the day, too. There's my dad and his partner, Henry Velasco, in our garage back in La Mirada, California, just like Warren and Colbert. We all worked out of the garages and did all the work there. And talk about working on cylinder heads. There's Henry Velasco working on the cylinder head on the small block Chevy Top Fuel Dragster. Oh, what great photographs those are. Here is the ladder as we look into the semifinals. Roger Brockton, Jason Line. And on the line right now, it is Ron Krischer and Greg Anderson. Krischer there on the left, Anderson on the right. Whoa, where was Krischer going? We've seen a lot of the pro stock cars take that little right-hand move over in that left-hand lane. Well, Anderson easily a 656, 212 mile an hour. And I tell you, that little left-hand move is probably why everybody has the lane choice in pro stock likes to take that right-hand lane. You see just uh, wheel speed getting a little out of control for Ron Krischer, and it does make a right turn, as you said, Paul. Greg Anderson, though, no problems right down that lane and into the final round. And to the line now, the number one qualifier, Roger Brogdon and Jason Line. Mike, you said you had clutch controller problems that kind of haunted you in the opening event two weeks ago, the Winter Nationals. Everything appears to be right on track today. Any concerns going into the final? Um, no, definitely going better, you know, this, this weekend for us. But, no, it's been, you know, going down the track and... That was pretty warm. That was a warm track right there. Might start to cool off a little bit. So, uh, no, nope, feel good. Cruz is running good. But, you know, this Castrol 4 is running good, too. So it should be a good race. Unfortunately for Mike Neff, by two thousandths of a second, he will not have lane choice. I got to believe the lane choice is a bigger factor than the fuel cars are a bigger factor for the pro stock cars than the fuel cars because as we said everybody takes the right hand lane and pro stock looks for a better starting line they like the better grip off of the launch to help with the car with fuel cars like a little bit better track uh, down the racetrack and it seems to be relatively even we look at for the fuel cars now we look at for pro stock wins by lane the right lane is 11 to 2 and basically I think it really has a lot to do with how they launch the car in that left hand lane if they want to make a good run from there so Roger Brogdon's your number one qualifier, but he lost lane choice to Jason Line from the previous round because Jason went nine thousandths of a second quicker to get that lane choice. You 
got to be on your game when you're running against Jason Line now. He runs a 654, 212. Comes off the line about twice as fast as Roger Brogdon did. Combine all that, you've got to win, and he's into the finals, looking to go back-to-back -back finals. Start of the season. He's going forward with Roger. Sound like he let the clutch out, and it just bogged when he did that. And, uh, obviously, it was... Uh, did not go the way he wanted to, to go. Don't know what happened at that point, but Jason Lyon was long gone after the green light came on. And so Pro Stock's final matchup is going to look this way. And Jason Line and the guy that just slapped the top of his car, Greg Anderson. Jason will have lane choice. Coverage of the NASCAR Nationwide Series at Thunder Valley in Bristol, Tennessee on the Roundy Round track, though. It starts Saturday. 1 o'clock on ESPN. Pro Stock Motorcycles. Here's the semifinal ladder. You see on the line right now, it's going to be Hector Arana and Karen Stouffer and Eddie Krawick and Ellie Tongla. Those are all great matchups. Both of them are going to be good. Oh, absolutely, Paul. And Karen Stouffer has a lane choice over your number one qualifier, Hector Arana. Hector set the national record. But I'll tell you, Karen's been doing a great job all day. Consistent lights. She needs to do that. Go out there and hit another 020, 030 light and make a nice pass. She has a chance. Hector got a slight advantage off the starting line. Boy, look at yeah, that Karen carried that front end. She oh, takes that. a win. Nice going, Karen. 684, 196 miles an hour. I'll tell you, that was a great job. I mean, Hector Ron had a slight advantage off the starting line, and then they made a great 60-foot time, so I thought it was probably going to be all over. But look at Karen carrying the front wheel on that Geico motorcycle through the middle of the racetrack through those shift changes and makes a beautiful pass to advance to the final. So the championship round in Pro Stock Motorcycle is halfway decided. Here is L.E. Tonglet and L.E. will face the Harley Davidson V-Rod of Eddie Krawick. What an impressive run though we saw out of L.E. Tonglet and his Suzuki. L.A. gets the advantage. Boy, the bike's moving around, though. Boy, did you see that back end jump everywhere? Still, L.A. Tonglet stays with it. But Eddie Kraywick is so powerful, he takes it. 682, 198 wow. miles an hour. We're knocking on the door of 200 on a motorcycle. Yeah, look at Ellie. He lost it right there when that bike washed out towards the center and you saw the back wheel just move with it. It had a little too much wheel speed after the 1-2 shift. Guarantee you lost some elapsed time right there. Slowed to a 686. Eddie Craywick in the end line went 682. Ellie's going to be tough because he had a 200th of a second advantage off the starting line. But you take a look at the Lucas Oil photo finish cam. It's Eddie Craywick by about half a bike length at the stripe. The finals matchup is now going to look this way with Eddie Craywick and Karen Stouffer. Harley. Suzuki, lane choice to Craywick. We go to Gary Gerald. Paul, here are the finalists now in pro stock. It's the teammates for the KB Racing team. Jason Line, victorious in the season opener at the Winter Nationals. Greg Anderson alongside. Building momentum. Is it too early in the season, or are you always thinking about the possibility of championships? I, I never think about momentum, but of course we'd like to, to win the championship with the Summit car. And uh, for all the people that sponsor us, you know, uh, uh, Miller Welders, Mac Tools, uh, you know, everybody like that, Cometa Gaskets, uh, they, those guys, they want to see uh, the championship, and that's, that's the goal, but it's way too early to think about that. Well, you're, you're rolling well. We just want to win the race. Despite the back surgery. And Greg Anderson, I know you had some motor concerns last night. Resulted in a change of power plants. Was there apprehension today when you put a new piece in there? Not at all, Gary. I'm thinking not at all. Like, everything we got, I think, is pretty doggone good. And it just comes down to car management on Sundays. You know, when you got sun like this, it's car management. I think the boys done a pretty good job. They're doing a little better job with Jason's car, though. So I got to go have a little chat with them, boys. Fifteenth time the teammates will face each other in the finals. We've got something really trick to show you now. Take a look at this on John Force's car as the butterflies open. A little condensation there from the air being so cold going to the top of the supercharger and frosting over the injector. Coming up, final rounds in all the classes.